so yeah, you see the schedule. We're almost halfway through, and it's been a, a great run so far. We've had a lot of great shares, a lot of great information, a lot of great work. Hopefully, you guys are following along at home. If you're not, uh, you definitely want to take advantage of this. Uh, also, it's a, you know, there's no way to know what questions to ask if you're not running through the stuff, and it won't stick. So it may be interesting, but you got to keep the stuff. So you got to move. Uh, you can see a few people. Craig's been there following along. I saw Mosey follow along earlier. Um, but just do, yeah, definitely do that. Take advantage of this and get up, get up and move around. Um, I'll go ahead and jump into this to, to legal stuff. Make sure you uh, be good to yourself. Only do uh, as much as you should be doing according to what your health dictates. Be careful for yourself first. Um, and then also, of course, the liability stuff. No one's here wants you to do anything wrong to yourself or anybody else. Uh, so this is this is just training because we love the art and we're sharing what we love. Um, so anyway, there's that piece, the legal pieces. Um, and again, reminder, please uh, stay on mute. But uh, do feel free to unmute and ask questions and make this interactive when there's a break, um, especially if they ask for questions. Come right off mute and ask for questions. We'll, we'll figure it out. Um, pin the instructor. If you pin the instructor, they'll be the primary person that you're watching. So you definitely want to do that. And you can also ask questions in chat. So if you uh, if you uh, ask questions in chat and they're asking for questions and you don't chime in, I'll ask your question for you if I notice it. I'm trying to do a bunch of things at once here, um, but I will try to cover you. And then lastly, turn on closed captions and you can see all the words being typed in as I speak. Um, I find that really useful because a lot of times I can't quite hear or something cuts out a little bit. Uh, it's just the nature of the beast here. And then uh, next we've got uh, Chad Doolin. He shows up on your screen as Chad Doolin on Facebook. Of course, he's uh, Chad uh, Edward. Um, he's got a lot of experience. Um, been doing martial arts decades. Um, he's going to be sharing. I don't know what he's going to be sharing. He'll share. He'll tell you what he's sharing. And hopefully, we'll introduce him on that. But uh, more seconds before we turn it over to Tim. As I'm doing this, any quick suggestions or questions for folks? Um, I'm happy to entertain those. Is it going smoothly? Um, how's it working? Uh, beyond the technical pieces, I can't cover for people. I think it really does matter the quality of camera and connections that you have. Uh, some people were super duper clear and some weren't. But you know, we're getting there. We're making it work. All right, if there's nothing else, let me turn it over to uh, Mr. Chad. Chad, thank you for coming, and uh, I'll let you introduce yourself and uh, rock on. Okay, so first off, my training space is outside, and it's cold, it's windy. We're getting some pretty substantial gusts, so I apologize for the wind noise. I can't do anything about it. Um, so I'll, I'll also ask Ty to sort of verbally relay any questions because there's just no sun glare. I'm not going to be able to see the, uh, the text string that's going on. Um, my thought for today is I want to, it's, I'm going to follow kind of a, a lower energy sort of thing, partly because I'm freezing out here. But I want to explore some options with the staff. Um, I'm half tempted to say Bo staff because I know that's one of Ty's pet peeves. Um, we can call it Bo, we can call it Seabot, we can call it Staff. I'll probably use all, all the terms interchangeably. But what I want to look at is I think a lot of us, except for those who were fortunate enough to start directly into Filipino martial arts, a lot of us have some type of karate, be it Japanese, Okinawan, or Korean, in our martial DNA. So I'm going to explore some of the basic staff that we might have learned way back when, tie that into some and then look, um, depending on how much time that takes, we're going to look at relating staff to some of the kickboxing aspects, some of the Pentateuchan. So that'll dovetail nicely with what we looked at earlier. And we'll also look at um, merging into flexible weapons. And then if we have time, we'll look at uh, Professor Priest's first Sanyo with a staff application. But I, I don't know that we'll get that far. So I'm going to, uh, again, I apologize for the wind noise as I step back. I, uh, I don't have a training partner, so you can see uh, Augmented Bob in the background. He's going to be helping me out. Um, mainly for reference for this, I'll, I'll switch to Rattan for a shorter staff, but I've found that using just the white PVC pipe gives a little bit better contrast and reference on camera, so we're going to start out with that. Um, start out working just talking about grips. A lot of stuff, I'm a little bit overly narrow to stay on screen, but we'll either have uh, 
two palms down. I'll often refer to this as a kayak grip or uh, two thumbs going in the same direction. Uh, Kelly Warden calls this a natural grip, so I'm going to steal his terminology for that. I think that's the most useful. I do have a piece of tape on one side of the staff. That's going to be super relevant. Step in. The tape side is going to be more relevant when we work on emphasizing one end, one end of the staff. That could be a spear application or just working more of a flipping abanico type application. So, a lot of a lot of where we start in if we look at our our base systems, almost everybody who does forms does something where you have a, an H pattern on the floor where you step left and you step right, generally with something that looks like a down block and then some form of punch. So typically the first weapon that you learn will be some type of staff, typically with a matched new, uh, matched grip, a kayak grip, coming into some form of a down block and followed up translating into some type of strike. So most basic, down and up going to both sides. Secondarily, flip down, either a thrusting line or a thrusting line. So we're going to explore that a little bit on the dummy. Um, Beyond that, we're going to look at kind of the, how some Sinawali breakdown comes off that. But taking just the most basic line, for us, it, it's just the dos manos, down and up. Real simple, we want to think in terms of not so much blocking the leg. Um, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to bend way down unless maybe if I'm shooting for a single leg, but I'm not going to do that with a stick, right? So the check here... I'm going to do, and I realize this is kind of, my leg is kind of on frame here, but I can control the leg here. So this, trust me, more monitoring the arms and following with the arms. So we're going to take that as our basic line. Control, monitor, and up. If I'm coming in with the cross and the down strike and then the follow, again, maybe I want to make the most concerned with the right arm most people are right-handed, that's where the weapon is going to come from. So as I come in, pass and hit, pass to the hit. And then as I roll from there into the next line, with the leg traffic, um, come with the check, the pass, and as I drive in and flip this, obviously I'm not going to dump Bob for you, but driving this up, leg hook here, looking just for a simple back throw. So if we look at that, once again, looking at just turning into the opponent, driving down, driving up, driving down and driving up. Then we look at the slightly more complicated hook, hook and hook, hook, hook and hook. Again, I apologize for the windows. And if we get a little more flexibility, if we drop the gloves the same way, that lets us maybe do a leg check, we'll do an arm check, we'll do a, we'll do a shoulder position. Okay, switching off. And again, this is a little bit short for this, but coming in, initially kicking the leg, kicking the arm, driving it in front of the shoulder. This, this hand can come free now. I'm using a shorter stick, just pins on me. This sort of chamber position also lets me secondary weapon and come in if that's my goal. Whether it's a defensive cut or a, or a finishing type of move, we have options. So that's the beginnings of what I'd like us to look at. So once again, if we look just the basics with the staff, coming down, turn and hit and drive. If we look at that as an empty hand application, again, a lot, some of us who are not so fortunate to start off in the in the Filipino arts, this was block a kick. Well, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense for a lot of reasons. I think most people are beyond that, thinking of that as a primary move right now. I can step in, I can check the leg, I can check the leg. But this comes in, especially if you do the softer style, the palm block, makes a lot of sense checking the arm, monitoring the arm, preventing a weapon draw, countering a weapon draw. Again, I could come and access a weapon, or I could simply drive through, and that high shot becomes just sort of a diving throw. Notice points of contact. I'm wrapping the arm, I'm wrapping the leg, and I'm coming into the, uh, the brachial plexus for that possible throw. 
So here we're taking the, the staff application, working it backwards and coming into a different sort of modality on the empty hand. Look a little bit at the grip shifts that go on as we come into this. Um, maybe into a little bit of the figure eights where it's just alternating, alternating. And what that really gives us is our Sinawali high, low, low, high. Breaks the single Sinawali pattern a little bit, but it almost has to because it's a double end. So again, a high, low, low, high just gives us a nice flow. We can work that with any length. We can work it with either hand pattern, or if we switch off, we can have the option of coming high to low, low to high, high, low, flipping low, high. So a lot of different lines come out. And again, these longer lines, again, a scoop to the leg, a scoop to the arm. And that's going to play real well with the, with the shorter weapon going either to a dos manos or coming to just an, a power assist. Coming low and then hooking the side. So we'll uh, let me stop and see if there's any questions there. Let me see if I can uh, get where I can see the. Yeah, I just I have too much glare out here to really see anything. So, anybody have any questions at this point? There's no questions in chat. Okay. Well, how am I doing on time, Ty? Uh, let's see. Almost one ten. Okay. Good enough. So we're going to stick with the, the double grip, and we're just going to use this now, the, especially for those of us who are trapped solo, the single stick or the longer stick, the, the CBOT can be a real useful training aid just in terms of mapping our, our kickboxing or our patatupin. So to, it prevents the, the tendency to get lazy, but we can really work in line. If we're, if we're looking at a shot, shot, crossing shot in the uppercut, it's really just the and the uppercut, but really forcing us to keep the other hand in the zone. And then sort of the connection there, if we go to the flexible weapon, we didn't dig out a sarong, but we can use the, the schmont kind of the same way. We can use it either just in terms of as a training aid to monitor jab, cross, hook, uppercut, or we can look at cutting the line jab, wrapping on the cross, the hook drives, and the uppercut comes, we go into a shianage type position, for example, or just a monitor check, over, wrap and pull, so now we're controlling the arm, the neck, and as much flexibility as we can build into a piece of pipe. So going from there, we'll go ahead and look. So the, the basic empty hand form that, that Officer Trace has taught, the, the first cane on you, and as he taught it, the first series of moves were going to step and so an angle two, a step and an angle one, and some form of step in the frame with the horizontal four. So we can, we can apply that to the staff. I'm going to, I'll talk a little bit about the body shifting first. Even with a short stick, I want to be aware if I step with the same side I'm striking, that's that's out of sync with what we typically do. And if my stick is driven down, or particularly if it's an edge weapon driven down, I do have the potential of my leg there. So we're, when we switch to the staff, I'm going to look at it more just slanting offline, slanting offline, and the drive. So with the longer weapon, although we often do the the so-called down block on the same side. We want to think of it right now in terms of just a pivot away, a pivot away, and then this, the horizontal shot, the flip, flip, and kind of a reach. So the pivoting, again, looking at Oh, 
becomes yet another throw. So once again, working, shifting away, shifting away, entering, entering with the leg motion, pulling, turning, and again, with, with a better position, we could look at also the the Pudicampala, the rotary head throw, but we're not going to get that kind of motion off of Bob right now. Looking at the hand switches, which I think is pretty important. This is one of the things I taught some staff at one of our gatherings, I think two springs ago, and uh, the grip transition has got to be a real challenge for folks. So I want to give a little slow up close on that. So if you take, and any stick will do, it can, maybe at this range, the contract, even on the short stick. Pivot, and we have two palms up. Going back the other way, pivot and pivot. So if I'm coming down, I come up, this hand pivots, this hand pivots, and I change. I'm never losing contact. Both hands are never open. Alternate, alternate. So if we work close, and again, I apologize for the wind noise. Pivot off, pivot off. With the thrust, now I'm going to, to a neutral position, hooking and driving. This allows me a little bit stronger push-pull. So if we look at that again, maybe with the, the medium-length stick, coming, checking this, coming the other way, clearing anything on the midline, shifting, driving in, maybe with the thrust here, coming with the throw here, or coming with the thrust into the hook, into the throw and pull. And again, you can see where Bob would come down, head down, arm up. Not the ideal, but the best that we can manage with uh, with the resources that I have right now. All right, questions so far? Okay, so far so good then. So coming again, we'll shift off a we'll look a little bit more at some Sinawali application. So taking... One end, again, using the, the tape directly. High to low, high to low. So coming over off of my low strike, I'm going to be in a neutral position with the, the thumbs indicating the direction of the tip. As this comes over, that's where the change occurs. Coming up, coming up, coming up. This is where the change occurs. So this change, that tip is sliding past one another. to be and go to what we might call our advanced center center line, coming high, low, high, and then off of that strike, we're going to shift high, low, 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 and again, we're going to look at the, the entry patterns in just a minute, but getting a feel for that long traverse made by one end of the weapon. Sweeping, opening the leg to get in behind. Pylon initially. Yeah, let's touch on that. As I come in on the first beat, there's a reaping action here. This might be like a, analogous to a finger jab, driving back. Sweep, come down, coming in. There's my hook on the high line, and as I'm going to the low line, maybe not both hands switching, but this hand's going to pivot over so that I can launch and, again, really drive the compression. The other thing we want to keep in mind with a longer weapon, again, coming at high level, the high shot here, that might be the point of departure to come in, driving for the, the stick choke. And again, notice, this is positioning under the arm to drive the arm up, levering the arm. The shot coming in and getting the hold that way. So if we put that together off of our off of a basic type of form, looking initially, shift, hit, hit, shift the other way, hit and hit. And if we don't have, if we have limited space, or well, we don't want to look to utilize the full side of the pattern, maybe the time to just shift the feet back, 
thumb down, thumb up. Do more of a double zero type of strike, coming down, coming up. Just working the shifts each way. So just working on a 90 degree line, working the angles and working the, uh, the different transitions, different applications. Really the same form no matter how we look at it, the same technique no matter how we look at it. Down to up, down to up, down. We change up and do as a thrust, down, thrusting this way. So that's a, a number of options on something really basic that, uh, like I say, is pretty much a part of our martial DNA for all of us. And again, I'll pause for any questions or any direction that people might like me to take from this. Okay, good. We'll then we'll change back and look at the same thing with the short stick. So again, looking at Remy's face. a lot of people doing these moves really low but remember it's still it's still the full angle too but coming to completion it's mimicking that line so maybe coming off taking the block check as we come the other way there's still attachment here coming stepping in again the leg control coming to the low line and if that is not working for whatever reason the horizontal shot coming back becomes the dos Matos horizontal shot so it's off of that down, down, and in. And remember, anytime this hand coming back can be accessing or tapping whatever other weapon you're going to bring in. So looking, to, uh, applying the, the stick and more of this not as way. Down, coming down this way, touching, and up. Notice that this can also just come under, driving the arms up, creating an upwards position as an analog horizontal shot. More vertical aspect, but still the, the horizontal position. Right, and Ty, that's actually about all I've got, because I'm freezing out here. <laughs> I, I can imagine. I can only imagine. I've been sitting here running this thing all day. That's going well, though. Did anybody have any questions for, for Chad? Or comments? Or whatever? Nice plan. Uh, correlation between hand stick and staff. So again, I'd, uh, again, I'm sorry for the wind noise, guys. Yeah. I just I like the correlation. We've talked about this before. I love the correlation between the empty hand, the staff, and the stick. You can see all the you know all the weapons. Okay, so I see. I see uh, Jeremy saying you'd like to see the staff form. Uh, a staff translation of Remy's first form, you mean, or just the kind of generic karate staff form? Okay, sure. Let me uh, let me reposition my camera a little bit, and I'll give you a uh, a take on it. Um, oh, let me see. All right, so hopefully no one gets motion sick as we reposition. All right, so. Again, excuse me, popping in and out of frame. So just for reference, the sort of the basic textbook on Yoisa, I'm going to do it more with pivoting than with stepping, but straight down. Strike down, horizontal strike, coming back, coming back, reinforce, reinforce, up, up, double zero, and finish. One, one way. So, A staff translation, not D staff translation, but A staff translation might be. Striking down, striking down, double cutting horizontally, coming back overhead. This one cutting down across me and across. 
going forward. Up. Up. Coming back. One, one more time. Upwards. Upwards. Good. Long strike. And then as I roll to a finish position, creating an opening, maybe drawing, inviting an, open, an attack, pass, strike, and finish. Could be one way, another way. You wanted to do it very textbook. One, two, three, four. Uh, coming like so. Coming more of an upright. The transition, if I come very upright here, this doesn't feel good to me. So here, I'm going to invert it. Just different takes on how you might want to do that. So think about what the core move is, and then think about what feels best to you within your your sort of set of basics. If you're if you're very much from a more uh, Okinawan Japanese background, then something like this is going to feel really good. If you're from more of a pure Filipino background, you might not like how your hand is, is pinned under it. So it might just be shifting down, shifting down double thrust and hook that way. Coming back could be a strike over and a strike over. Um, could be a figure eight coming and then coming back up. Coming back up. And that wind gust almost took the, uh, the tablet out, so that might be about it for me for right now. I'm going in and getting out of the windstorm. Any other questions? Yeah, why don't you uh, why don't you go in and might be easier to answer questions. Okay, and very good. Give me a second. Yep. Okay, Ty, back to you. Yeah, so just wondering uh, if anybody wanted to chime in, have questions. It'll be really easy right now. He can answer, and he he's <laughs> if you're if if you're lucky enough to be on his other uh, Facebook uh, private group, there's some really great uh, discussion training he also holds. So, so fire your questions away. He'll he'll eat them up. Oh yeah, I guess I should do contact stuff. There's a uh, Chad's Arnis group that's parallel to uh, Ty's Arnis. You can search that on Facebook. Um, I'll I'll add a uh, link to that in the the um, what do you call it? The announcement for the thing. Uh, no other questions for Chad other than, hey, show me some stuff. <laughs> that, that's cool. I get it. Totally makes sense. Uh, Chad, is there right, well, you want to say, like, uh, any uh, events that you like to recommend or pages? I mean, I know you don't have a school page, but there's schools you teach out of and, and people you know. Yeah, there's the there's the Chad's Arnese group. Um, difficult to say. Um, my, my buddy Jerry Lennon and I teach uh, primarily small circle out in out of Newark, Delaware, Wednesday nights. If that school ever reopens, um, not not sure what the toll of the, the shutdown is going to be there. Um, most Mondays, I teach modernies at uh, Chess Harris School outside of Philly. And other than that, it's kind of catch as catch can. Makes sense. Um, let's see. It's one twenty seven. Um... Let's see, you, you and I attend a lot of events in the areas here. Um, is there any places that you besides the classes? Um, well, everything canceled for the spring and summer, so. Uh. As, once things open up, I mean. Obviously, if you are if you know the WMA, both of, both of us teach a lot or, or participate a lot there. Um, yeah, we're, I guess hopefully we'll be able to have a fall thing. Um, Ty and I may have some other park engagements. Uh, depending on which state opens up first and where we can actually go and do something. Absolutely. Of course, cool. you know, we had the bird bathrooms in my background was frozen solid this morning. Um, I guess it slows the murder hornets down, if nothing else. Nice. They'll go down to Florida where Dan is. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm jealous of the warm people. That's right. All right th thanks, guys. I hope people enjoyed that. Thanks very much, Chad. That was awesome. It's good to see, like, like a few people notice. I mean, uh, I also appreciate the connection, not only with other arts, but also uh, weapons that people don't think about. Um, or if they do, they, they know about them, but they don't work them. So this is, this is good stuff. Um, 
and more ways you can make things your own, which is, you know, a big part of what it's about.